Hey everyone, it's Stephen Mertens here, and I'm here tonight to present some pictures from a collection that I call Spring Photo Ohio, A Glimpse of the Past. Uh, this collection uh, arose from um, a great interest of mine in historic photos of Springfield, and I wanted to try to create something uh, that would let people visualize what scenes and buildings in Springfield used to look like several decades ago. Uh, now each picture in this collection consists of two photos, uh, one photo being an old uh, historic photo of a building or scene in Springfield, and then the other photo being a more recent photo taken by me of that exact same location. And then using image editing software, I combine the two pictures together uh, to create one photo that shows a virtually seamless um, transition from present to past. Uh, to give you a better idea of what I'm talking about, um, I'd like to start by showing you one of the older photographs I found uh, that was taken from the corner of Center and High Street. So I found this picture uh, taken from the corner of Center and High Street and it sparked my interest immediately because I, I recognized this street, uh, only now it, it doesn't look as full. It's actually uh, kind of bare because there, there isn't a lot of retail stores there. And so what I did is I went to that corner and then took a picture of the exact same shot uh, as seen here. And what I wanted to do was try to incorporate the two pictures together so that you can see them uh, together and, and notice the transition um, from past to the way it looks now. And after experimenting, uh, I, I ended up uh, with this, which shows a lot of the elements um, from the older picture placed onto the more current picture. Um, so that's the premise of this collection that I've made and I've had a lot of fun making them so I'd like to show you some more. I, I was actually surprised to see the amount of stores that are here and I actually work in the Credit Life building and I walk down the street every day and I had no idea that there used to be a JC Penney's uh, located uh, in the parking lot across the street from my building. Um, and it was interesting to see uh, that there was a department store also in the Bushnell building uh, because I walk through there because I park in the garage when it gets cold and it, it's, I, just, I had no idea that there used to be a store there. And it, it was just very interesting to see even the traffic, uh, the foot traffic. Um, and it, it, just, it makes, me, makes me really wish I, I could have seen uh, what these streets looked like uh, back then. Now this next picture I have here is of the Shawnee Hotel and my work when we typically have events they rent out the floor where they hold events on the Shawnee Hotel so I've been in there a numerous amount of times and this whole time until recently when I came across these pictures I didn't know that it used to be a hotel I thought they were always apartments and uh, you know I came across this picture here and it was really Cool to see the Hotel Shawnee sign uh, on the corner of the building. And another interesting thing about the picture I found and made to make this picture is in the background, uh, the building after asking around I found out was the M&M Bank building. And of course that now is the current site of, I think it's the Commerce building now. One of the cool things about finding some of these pictures is it sometimes forces you to do a little bit of, of research on some of the buildings. And when I came across this picture of the Clark County Courthouse, I, I wanted to do a little research because I didn't recognize it uh, because it didn't look anything like the courthouse we have today. And uh, after doing a little bit of research online, I found some very interesting facts on, on our courthouse. Uh, in 1881, Springfield's second courthouse was completed on the site of the current location of, of our current courthouse. Uh, the courthouse was designed by Charles Krieger a uh, Springfield architect who's designed several Springfield's buildings, uh, including the Marketplace and St. Joseph's Catholic Church. And on March 12th of 1918, uh, the courthouse was damaged heavily by a fire. Uh, the flames destroyed the clock tower and several rooms in the courthouse, and the Springfield newspaper report said that winds carried the sparks as far down the Spring Street. Uh, after the fire, the walls remained intact, so a major renovation was started in 1922 to rebuild the courthouse. Uh, some of the changes were the arced windows were made rectangular, uh, the clock tower wasn't rebuilt, but it was replaced by a dome, and the entrance stairs were removed, uh, creating a street-level entrance. Uh, the rebuilt court courthouse was completed and rededicated in 1926. 
uh, which serves as our courthouse, uh, serves as the courthouse that we have today. I found this picture of the King Building fire that happened on the night of September 15th in 1956. And the King Building was located between the State Theater and the Hub Clothing Store. Uh, and the Hub Clothing Store was located in the, RQ, the recently demolished RQ Building. And I, I walk by this parking lot where the King Building used to be um, almost every day uh, when I walk around uh, or w walk to work. And I never knew there used to be a building there, so I was surprised when when I saw this picture because I immediately recognized the RQ building. And uh, now I know why there's a gap in between the RQ building and the State Theater. An interesting fact that I read about the King building uh, is that uh, the King building was built by the family of Robert Q. King, who was a real estate investor and Springfield's fire chief from 1878 to 1891. And, uh, RQ, Robert Q. Quigley is at also who the RQ building uh, is named after. I love uh, the Crow Collier building. I just, I like the way it looks and I like to imagine what it used to look like when it was a working factory. And my grandfather used to work there w when he was younger. And uh, it just, I think it would have been so cool to be able to, to walk in there and just see everything. From 1938 until 1956, this 917,000 square foot factory complex housed the Crow Collier Publishing Company. And during the height of the company's success in the 1940s, Crow Collier was producing about 20 million periodicals every month, including some of their best known magazines such as Collier's Weekly, Woman's Home Companion, and Farm and Fireside. Circulation of the magazines declined steadily after 1950s as radio, television, and a rise of a new generation of national news publications adopted to the changing national tastes. In December of 1956, the company decided to cease operations in the Springfield plant, laying off over 2,000 local workers. So when I came across this photograph, uh, I recognized the building immediately because I eat lunch there quite often. Uh, so upon a little bit of research, I found out that this building uh, opened in 1917 as the Home Hotel, uh, which was a five-story, 80-room hotel uh, built by John Saladay Home. Uh, the hotel was built as being fireproof and considered one of Springfield's more prestigious hotels. Uh, then several years later, uh, this building, uh, the ground floor of this building became a Ruby Tuesdays. Um, and then spent some time uh, in the 90s as a, a club for teens uh, before becoming Buffalo Wild Wings as it is today. And I, this building is really special to me because it's where I, I met my wife during my lunch break one day. Uh, the large building on the northwest corner of West Main Street and Fountain was originally built as the Fairbanks Hotel in 1906. Uh, the Fairbanks Hotel was built on the location of Black's Opera House, which was a thousand-seat auditorium uh, that was destroyed by a fire uh, three years earlier. Uh, located inside the Fairbanks Hotel was the Fairbanks Theater uh, that seated 15 to 1,600 people. Uh, based on the pictures I've come across, it looks like the theater was located on the west end of the building. And now the building is really long and it's narrow, and, and I can't see uh, where a stage or a theater to sit that many people was uh, would be. Uh, so I'm guessing that the part of the building that was a theater has been demolished. Um, so after the hotel closed, the rooms were converted to office space and it became the first National Bank building. Um, and the name of the building changed several times over the years and it appears the name of the building uh, was changed to whatever bank was occupying the corner at the time. I found a postcard uh, depicting the memorial arc uh, of the south entrance of Snyder Park and I, I really like the car that was in the picture so I wanted to kind of incorporate that into a more recent photograph and uh, someone had told me that the two people pictured in the car uh, is actually the brothers uh, David and John Snyder who donated the park now I'm not sure if that's true uh, but that would be very interesting if it was uh, and then the, the massive Romanesque arch that's uh, on the south entrance of Snyder Park was actually a memorial arc, uh, arch that was dedicated to the brothers uh, who donated the land to Springfield to make Snyder Park. And during its time as an inn, the Pennsylvania house was the childhood home of Isaac Kaufman Funk, 
uh, who was the founder of Funk and Wagnalls, uh, whose family was one of the various owners of the property uh, during its time as an inn. And uh, traffic on the National Road decreased after railroads eventually reached Springfield, and then by the end of the Civil War, uh, the Pennsylvania House closed as an inn. And I, I've even gone there on a field trip uh, when I was in elementary school, but I don't remember the condition of, of the Pennsylvania House. So uh, this picture, the picture that I found was from 1967, and uh, from the way it looked, it looked like it was in pretty bad condition. Uh, so I'm glad that it, it's been restored and it's now open to the public as, as a museum. If I had a, a second favorite building aside from the Crow Collier building, it would have to be the Regent Theater. And the Regent Theater was opened by Gus Sun for his vaudeville circuit in 1920. And it was originally built as a vaudeville theater that seated 1,300 people uh, with offices on the second floor that housed Sun's booking agency. <clears throat> And as motion pictures began to take over the entertainment industry, the Regent Theater was modified to accommodate both movies and theater acts. Uh, then later it was converted to just a movie theater, and the Regent Theater eventually came under the ownership of the Shackers Brothers, who operated the theater until it closed. Uh, and on June 31st of 1992 uh, is when it closed, and I read that the last movies to play there were a 9.30 showing of Love Crimes featuring Sean Young and a 10 p.m. showing of Juice starring Tupac Shakur. I found this postcard that was labeled uh, Esplanade on Busy Morning, Springfield, Ohio. And I, I liked the scene that it showed here uh, with the big fountain right in front of the then marketplace and just all of the, the traffic and people walking around and also some of the older cars lined up on the left side of the picture and it, it, it made me it kind of gave me a chance to really visualize what that area used to look like um, you know back several decades ago and one of the things that I noticed is just how massive that the fountain is and in comparison to the fountain that we have today it, it's it's much larger and it, it just would have been I think it would have been really cool to be able to see that I found some old pictures of uh, Springfield Ho South High School, um, and at the time the pictures were taken, it would have been just known as Springfield High School. And this is the high school that I graduated from, and this, the high school that my father graduated from, so there's a lot of great memories uh, of this building. Uh, the high school was built in 1911, and it has a facade uh, uh, that resembles the Library of Congress and the dome. Uh, was built after um, the dome on the Capitol building. And one of the pictures that I found it, it was labeled as the first graduating class in 1911. Um, so it was just, it was very interesting to see uh, the, the first, gra the, a picture of the first graduating class all grouped together in front of the school that I graduated from. When I came across this picture, I noticed the RQ building in the background and it was very interesting to see all of the other buildings uh, to the right of the RQ building. I've lived in Springfield all my life and I didn't know that there used to be uh, an entire block uh, that, that's not there now. And to, to see all these buildings and, and the traffic and also it looks like the, tr uh, the buses along the side of the road, it just uh, looks like it would have been really cool to see what that looked like uh, back then. Well, I hope you enjoyed looking at some of the pictures from my collection. And if you have an interest in finding out uh, more about Springfield or finding some pictures, uh, some other pictures of Springfield, the Heritage Center is a great resource. And also there's a video DVD uh, created by Randall Art uh, that has a lot of great information and pictures as well that can be picked up at the Heritage Center. Um, thank you so much for watching.